the MIDI cash cows. What an incredibly interesting position it is each and every year. What we need to look at in this one is their role and their PPM. So those two together, if you can get that right, tick, tick, that's exactly what we need to make some money in this position. There's usually five to six guys in this spot, which, you know, and who make 100 to sort of 200K there each year. And it's at some stage of the season. Some, it'll be from round one. And they're going to be the clear ones that we're going to start with. And there'll be some that do it throughout the season when injuries pop up and the like there. So look at the teams where minutes are available or if there is a, an injury to you know one of your one of the guys in that squad and, and your man gets those minutes there, which is going to be very, very helpful. So let's kick it off with Eisenhuth at the Panthers for 397. He needs Yo not to play. So outside of that, he's not going to be getting the minutes that he needs with his, you know, he always scores pretty well when he gets big minutes because he's that type of guy, uh, but the minutes aren't there. Tommy Hazleton with the Sharkies, 397 as well. Same average, 29 in 25 minutes. He scored there, so that was very impressive of a PPM. Obviously, plenty of attacking stats and the like there for Hazleton. He does need a bigger role. I just don't think he gets when the team is healthy. So definitely a clear watch if there is multiple injuries in the Sharks pack. Spencer Lenu, so 395K, average of 28.7. A lot of people are very high on him and he's very, very highly owned there in fantasy. So he did actually receive an extra 10 minutes per game last year in 2023. That's up from 23 minutes up to 33 from the year before. His PPM did drop to 0.87 there from a PPM of one. And he had one try last year instead of having four. So yeah, you put that together and that's where a lot of his PPM actually went away was that his lack of tries so the three less tries that he scored. He definitely needs a 40 minute roll and to bring his PPM up to about that 9.95 to, to one for him to be worth it. Cause that would mean he gets close to that 40 average, somewhere around that 38 to 40 there. And that would be enough for, for it to be worth it getting closer to that sort of eight to 12 points of value, 11 there, if he can get right up to that, which I think is a, a big ask given coach says he wants Lenu to be Spencer. Like he wants it to just be, just to be himself uh, so really, is it the same minutes around that 30 to 35? Look, if he gets his PPM right up in those minutes, then that could be cool too. But I just think it's too much of a risk at 395 when I think you can go cheaper, likely with one or two guys from this list or just go right up into the mid-range or the gun status for the mid. So that's Spencer Lenu. Toby Couchman, dual position for him, which is cool. A 395, the average is 28.7. It just seems like he will get a bench middle roll, unfortunately. He made his money last year, getting you know, up to 395. He got 36 minutes in that, so PPM's not great around that sort of 0 0.78, 0 0.8 mark. He's going to need anywhere between 48 to 52 minutes with that PPM to get uh, to be worth it in our sides, get that sort of 10 points of value, get him up to in the 500s there. Keenan Palacia. 393 for him. Another interesting player going to the Titans. The average is 28.6. So he has a very, very poor PPM of 0.7, which I've got down here as being vomit worthy. So 41 minutes per game there for 28.6. Not good at all. So they, the Titans have big minute middle forwards in Mo Fodawaka and Tino. And yeah, he says he sh probably shouldn't get 50 minutes, which he needs at a minimum, unfortunately. So 34 he averaged in 49 minute games when he played over 30. So there's obviously plenty underneath that, but that PPM is absolutely tripe and not something you want in your side. Definitely in fantasy there. Bunty R4 at 392. The average is 28 and a half for him. He has a really good PPM in, you know, compared to those other couple of guys at 0.96. And I just don't see the minutes with Capewell coming over as well. Right in the Akure likely to be on the bench in that one. So Bunty, I think just minutes probably just aren't going to be there, unfortunately, needing sort of, you know, anywhere near that 40 mark in minutes. Liam Knight, big one to talk about here. 385K, he is averaging 28 last year. So he did score an average of 38 and 37 in 41 minutes in both of those years in 2019 and 2020. So can he get back to that and do it again? The mins are, are, are definitely available at the Bulldogs. We know that given, yes, Josh Curran's over, but they've got Max King, that's only the only sort of middle, yeah, front row forward middle that's uh, likely to get some good minutes there. So there's definitely room for a second guy to get a, uh, somewhere at least around that 40 to 45 minutes. Last year, he scored 33 in 39 minutes last year when he played over 30, which is obviously five points of value, but we do need that PPM to jump 
and potentially the minutes to jump up a little bit higher as well. An extra five would, would be great. So he needs that little bump in both, which he probably should get the, the minutes bump. Can he get the PPM bump? And I think that knowing that he's a good chance of being the starting front rower, that uh, yeah, there's a high chance that he could bump that up and, and do better. So the narrative here, he's sort of spoken about his mental demons, not looking after himself and how he's looking to bounce back. So there's the narrative there. He has to step up in this pack for the dogs to be good. So, you know, can he take that role on? I'm not sure. He has done it before during those couple of years that I mentioned, which gives him, you know, 10 points of value. Can he do it again? That's the big question mark with Liam Knight. And we'll find out in the trials. We'll find out if he's named in the starting jersey. There's a few things to think about with that Togs pack, that's for sure. And Liam Knight is one of the guys that we'll definitely be looking at under 400K. Oregon Kofusi. At 382, so 27.8 is his average there. The 0.82 PPM is a bit average, but when he went over 30 minutes, he went down to a 0.72. So we'll avoid him straight up from there. Shaq Mitchell with the Rabbitohs. So 380K, it's a little bit steep, sadly, unfortunately, just at first glance. 0.9 PPM is good. He does need 40 minutes regularly, which he's just unlikely to get at this point. You got Ryan Sutton, the next man. So he's another guy fighting for a spot in the 17 for the Dogs. I do think Liam Knight would be ahead of him at this point. He had a really, really bad season overall, considering what he was able to do at the Raiders in in a previous life. So there's definitely that to look at, but he just didn't look the same player. So the minutes are available for him, but likely not enough if he's not sort of in that top two forwards, I think. Likely behind Knight, as I said, in the sort of anywhere between that 16 and 17 jersey with a 0.83 ppm. Not terrible, but again, you need 40 minutes minimum. Alec McDonald with the Storm, 369, average of 27 for him. There's not enough minutes. Matt Croker with the Knights, 366, average of 26.6. He has a ppm of 0.76 in games with minutes over 30, so that's not going to be enough because he'll need you know, over 40 minutes to be worth it. There are games where he does play that sometimes with injuries, but... A lot of his bigger minute games were at the beginning of the season when Adam Elliott missed a fair bit of time and was playing less minutes when he was there. Let's go to Fletcher Baker now. 360K, average of 26.2 last year. So he had just groin, he's had just coming off groin surgery there uh, that he's returning from in the rehab group. He had 29 minutes a game last season. One PPM in 2022, which was cool. So you got 26 points in 26 minutes. And... Whenever he got over 30 minutes last season, he was able to get 36 in 37 minutes. So that's great. The PPM is definitely there. And that's something that we want to look at when you're looking at these cheapy middles. So great news to start. 360, that little bit less uh, expensive compared to the other guys. And we'll need to see if he's the one that steps up into that spot as that sort of you know second or third middle there. You imagine Corey Jensen takes some minutes, but there's probably enough room for one more of their forwards to get somewhere closer to that 40 minutes and then potentially their fourth middle who could be a sort of a 20 minute guy or 25 minute guy. And we'll speak about a couple of them a little bit later in the video that could definitely do a job in your side. But yeah, if you don't, if he, if he gets that role somewhere closer to that 35 to 40 minutes, then I think at that point a minute, he has close to that 10 points of value and will make you a bit over hundred K. So let's watch trials to, to make that decision. If he looks great in the trials, means he's recovered really well from his groin surgery, uh, but it's not something you really want to see coming into a preseason, especially late like this, you know, a month out from from round one into the into in the preseason there. So keep an eye out him. Alex Seafarth, three fifty nine k, the twenty six average for him. There's no real spot for him, unfortunately, as much as he scores well when he gets an opportunity. Royce Hunt for him at three fifty five k, more than half his games are under thirty minutes. Is enough caution for you? He has a thirty five average there if there are injuries. So that, you know, 10 points of value, but that's probably two injuries at minimum uh, and, and to their bigger minute guys as well. Medoc Masilla, lower in the pecking order now after kind of disappointing for us last year. The dual position could be cool. Again, if there's lots of injuries, but they've got plenty of edge guys now. Um, they've got at least a few middles extra. Seller can play there. Eisenhuth if he doesn't get the, the edge spot. Aaron Penne, a 0.8 PPM, just not good enough for him. So we'll leave him. Sami Solo there. At 344k, so he's either going to be 17th or 18th man. Not enough mins yet in this team, even with Horsburgh out, I think, from the from the start. He needs to up his PPM of uh, 0.85, which is okay, but needs to be better. Uh, similar Fainu with the Tigers there. He's got the dual position, which is good. 344k, average of 25. 
I'm only played on the edge last year, so 0.46 PPM is pretty yuck. Yeah, even if he brought that to the middle, a work ethic is not uh, exactly there, unfortunately. Ogden, no mins for him available, I don't think. Widemu Greg, I th I'd say, would be ahead of Ogden very comfortably at 336K. Needs injuries again, like what happened last year. Stepped up when there were injuries and, and did 34.5 average in 40 minutes. So that's definitely okay, but it's not incredible. Uh, but again, you'll need that 40 minutes for him to get 10 points of value exactly like he had last year when he played those minutes. Uh, Tip on Moiroa, he's a, a no for us. Kobe Hetherington, 334K. He's definitely trials watch. If he gets the 13 roll or something, then then a maybe, but a 0.77 PPM. Not great for a middle. He'd have to get sort of, you know, 45 to 50 minutes there. Unlikely. Makatoa, he's a no at the, you know, chance of minutes as well. I think he's third in line after those two guys that I just spoke about. Mason Teague at 329. I think you're avoiding with him on the bench, but yeah, he hit some solid ones for sure. Uh, Demento Noah Brown at 327. Okay, for him there, average is 24, so it's a no from him on that one. Just before I move on, I do need to quickly have a look at some of our guys here that I um, popped their footy stats up for, which I, I forgot to do. But yeah, Spencer Lanyu, it's an interesting one on his 2023, just with those minutes there. So it's not great at all with the 28.7 in 33. And you expect someone like him to, to be a lot better on that front. But again, there's a bunch of games later on in the season where he was under 100 meters and had a nice stretch there. But even those games, there were some 29s, 27s. His game with a try was in there. So you do need to get those meters gained up for him for it to be relevant. Liam Knight has a lot more games to look at and we obviously just spoke about it there. But back here when he was you know, sort of fit and firing and, and being a, a quality player in the bunny set up, he was able to score well. So that's what we're hoping for. And then a couple of those games at the back end of last year with the dogs, where he scored a try with this 54 in 37 minutes. But then those games there, the 34 in 47, 27 in 33 and 18 in 24, all aren't super exciting to be honest with you. So yeah, he's a bit of a worry on that front. And Fletcher Baker, who we just spoke about, um, minutes for him. It's always fairly consistent and, and he's a guy that doesn't miss too many tackles. He had a couple of games there through the middle. He was at three and four, but for the most part, he's pretty solid at that at 18 tackles for 1.8. Meters gain for him is the main issue. And if he can get that up, which means he'll get a couple more tackle breaks and offloads, there's definitely room for improvement. But if he just got these minutes and kept the, these type of stats, then he still has some uh, available um, yeah, money to be made. So that's that with those guys. All right, Tom Ale with the Warriors. Just too many forwards, I think. I don't know if he gets the spot. Puru with the Raiders at 325K. He averaged 33 last year in the one game that he played. So he's very, very talented. We've heard good things about him. He does need the 35 to 40 minutes. Now he's been priced up, which is unlikely there. Liam Henry with the Panthers. So 320K, average of 27 last year in the games that he played. He averages 62.6 in New South Wales Cup. So that is absolutely incredible. It's Jermaine Hopgood numbers and exactly what you're looking at if you want a, a guy on the bench who is going to get anywhere between 25 and 30 minutes. This is the type of player you'd want because he'll actually make money on that starting price, which is at 23 at the moment. So he did score 26 in 23 minutes. And again, that wouldn't be enough. That would only be three points of value in his three Penrith games. He's still a youngster, born in 2001, so 22 years old. And yeah, he needs the 30 minutes. He'll be a trial watch. Maybe he can get you know, Spencer Lenu's 33 minutes. That would be the big question mark uh, if he could get that. But yeah, those three games for him, 22 in 20 minutes, 32 in 25 with four tackle breaks and an offload to ground that was, and then 24 in 24 minutes there. So we know that he can do good things when he's on the park. Um, yeah, if he, was, if he was given more opportunities, then you can see there, 25 minutes, his highest one, he could get 32, which is cool. And he only needs a bunch of games at, you know, sort of scoring 32 in, in close to 30 minutes, and he'll be a winner in our sides. But 320K is a little bit annoying that that got priced up, but unfortunately, can't win them all, and you can't, uh, you know, get everything perfect in the, the, the exact conditions that you want. Jack Hetherington, 303 is obviously a no with him. Bench minutes, if he gets them, unlikely anyway. Trey Mooney, plenty of talk about him at 300K as well. The average is 26 last year. He scored a 46 in 39 minutes in that last round, in round 27. I just don't think the mins are going to be available with him when he's got those other couple of guys ahead of him. I think at this stage, likely in Puru and, and, and those fellas, but has some talent. 
Isaac Fa'asula Malawi at 297. So Palacia comes over and I think he takes Isaac's minutes. Unfortunately, Saluka so Fafita, I don't think that he gets any minutes as well with the bunnies. Davi Mowale, I think he is probably slightly ahead of Saluka. He's fighting for a bench spot. He did it did seem like he came in underdone and, and because they they were missing a few middle forwards, he had to play bigger minutes in that sort of first month or so, and he just didn't look right. But 21 in 27 minutes last season, he would need to, to bump that up. I just don't see it happening from the start. Jesse Colhoun. At 286k, the average is 21 for him. So I grabbed him last year with that 48 off the, on the edge before he got injured. He's unlikely to get a spot at this point, in my opinion. Atta Mariota, another guy that's uh, you know, fighting with, for a spot with Solo, Pasami Solo there, 60, 60k cheaper, which is pretty cool. He averaged 20 in 24 minutes. So yeah, a little bit low still on the PPM side, but has room for growth, that's for sure. Xavier Willison, big fella for the Broncos. I got a couple of these boys, uh, I don't know what they're feeding them in Brisbane, but it's, it's uh, pretty incredible. Uh, and there's a guy that we'll speak about in a sec as well uh, for them to go along with Payne Haas. At 263, the dual position is great. Average of 19. He's fighting for that last bench middle spot, in my opinion. He scored 19 points in 18 minutes, and he has scored three tries in his career so far, which is pretty cool. So we need to get him up near that sort of 30 minutes, and he could definitely be an attacking threat, which is helpful. And... Yeah, we'll get him in with that lovely deep uh, dual position with the beautiful PPM as well. So look at Willison in the trials and, and see what they do with him. Kai Rodwell with the Eels. There's a bit of talk about him. I think he's solid, but no spot for him likely. Mamacia, there's no spot for him, in my opinion. Same with uh, Peter Holler. He's a, a few back. There's four cheapy middles in this one, which is crazy for the Raiders. Sam Hughes, he's obviously the 2024 hype train man. I, won't expect, I wouldn't expect the world from him, but I would expect a profit at some point through the year. Has a lovely, terrific one PPM, which is good. You know, he needs, he's going to need that 25 to 30 minutes, obviously, to make decent cash there, you know, and at least 100, 150K. But Max King and Preston, we've got in the past two seasons. So King two seasons ago, Preston last season. That shows that, you know, the Bulldogs really need forwards. They have no forwards available. And, uh, you know, anyone who can come in and show some type of promise seems to make some good cash. And King, it was, you know, 300,000 plus. Preston was close to 500,000 at one point. So both of those guys could def uh, did it well. And Sam Hughes could be the guy to come in and, uh, you know, turn himself into that second front row forward spot that they really need the dogs because no one is jumping off the page stealing that, that starting spot, if he does really well, he could be one of those guys that has the upside of, of minutes of 40 to 50 if he can do really, really well. So I definitely am looking to have him in my side just with the lack of forwards. And, and a lot of these other teams, it's like, well, they need kind of two or three injuries for the minutes to be available to for them to you know make a lot of money. Whereas Hughes, it's probably an injury to Sam King and he slots into a 35 to 40 minute role. But again, we have to watch him in the trials and see how things go. And if that all checks out, he looks great, like he did last year in the few games that he played, then uh, he, it could be all systems go for Husey to play bigger minutes. So definitely some upside in a bench middle role that you usually don't see, I think, just because of the quality of the Bulldogs back. Uh, Tua Tavakit with the Dragons there. I think it's a no from him. He's, he's not close. Um, same here with uh, Tambo Penu. From the Eels, so it's a no from him. Vili Fafida with the Dragons, so 230k. I was having a look at his cup stats. Never had a 100-meter game running. Even some games he had bigger minutes, so some were 20-odd, some were 40-odd. Not great on that front. We need some extra running from him. Uh, another another fine new brother there. He's going to be a later. He's still well down the pecking order. Montgomery with the Dogs. Brian with the Knights. Uh, Pahulu with the Titans, all way well down the pecking order. Uh, and then Takura. From the Broncos, is another big fella. He's a big boy, as we say. Fighting for that final spot in the 17 as well, and I think he needs an injury likely. He's, he'd be behind Willison. Um, yeah, just to see how Baker pulls up from his groin issues and the like before we even look at him. And who to watch? I've got him in order there. I think Liam Knight up top just for the dogs and where they're at. That's why I've got Sam Hughes in there as well at, six, uh, at five. Fletcher Baker, number two, could definitely do well, has the best PPM outside of Spencer Lenu in 2022. But yeah, Lenny needs a few things to go right. Baker just needs to roll, in my opinion. Uh, and then Liam Henry, we know he's the best PPM guy here. So if minutes become available, awesome. Sam Hughes and then Xavier Willison, number six. So that is the middle cheapies, the cash cows that you guys all should be looking at 
ready to go, ready to pick in your sides for 2024. We'll probably need one of these guys at a minimum. And I think probably two, like one of the mid-range guys and potentially one of the cheapy guys will work well. So let me know the way you're playing it at the moment, where you're looking to go with it. And uh, we'll catch you in the next few videos, which obviously will be going through the cheapies and we'll sprinkle in some of the chat around the uh, all the teams as well. And, and guys, don't uh, forget to make sure to follow me on Instagram and also TikTok, NRL Cricket Analysis. Get around that uh, and support me. That would be delightful. I really appreciate all you guys and we'll see you in the next video.